you know, the, the best thing in the world, you know, when you're you're working with someone for a service is to to meet someone that not only says what they do, but they do what they say. And, you know, your process was very clear, very concise. You know, you you you, you take you go above and beyond to protect both yourself and the person you're working with. So, you know, I was telling my wife, I'm like, look at this, look at this. He's, you know, this person's communicating, you know, and and, and what they want. Look, they're, they're telling me what they're going to do. And it's available when they said it was going to be available, if not before. Whenever marijuana is mentioned, people are likely to conjure up stereotypical images of stoners surrounded by smoke haze, sprawled out on a sofa with half-eaten junk food as decor. For modern marijuana consumers, this couldn't be further from the truth. And with more and more cannabis users entering into the marketplace, science is having to play catch-up on the science behind the plant. Cannabis is known among terminal illness circles as a way to relax, increase appetite, aid in pain management and reduce inflammation. But not much research has been done into the effects of marijuana as a sport enhancer. High-performance marijuana dives deep into the science of this centuries-old medical treatment. By digging into the history of cannabis use, dating back to ancient times, P.J. Frederick is able to separate fact from fiction when it comes to this mysterious plant. So whereabouts are you right now then, P.J.? I'm actually in Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico, windswept and interesting. You're my first Puerto Rican author. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not Puerto Rican. I'm just you're... visiting. <laughs> oh, you're just visiting. Oh, so where's yes, home? Um, originally Miami. Um, right now, Arkansas. You know, okay. In the United States. I, I see. So wait a second. Why did you move from Miami to Arkansas? Because that would mean you moved from a coast right to the middle is that right yep um, what happened there did op- you do you not like the ocean <laughs> no i love the ocean that's why i'm here <laughs> um i had an opportunity unrelated to, you know obviously to high performance marijuana um i was uh working in the cycling industry for a bit and i was headquartered the company i worked with was headquartered there so uh, we left beautiful sunny south florida to go there and I guess you could say we, we've been imported and, and it was snowing really bad and we, we just decided we couldn't deal with it. So we came to Puerto Rico for a month. <laughs> right. I see. Because I've got I've got another there's another author I work with and she lives in Florida and she is thinking with her other half of moving to. Oh, I, wish, I, I want to say New Mexico, but it's right in the middle. It's, there's no there's no ocean nearby. And so I don't yeah. know, is, is that a thing in the U.S.? Are businesses relocating away from the coasts? Is that a thing? Um, it, it depends. It, it depends on, on the industry and, and the basically cost of living. Uh, cost of living in South Florida is atrocious compared to, you know, central parts. Yeah. Um, so it, it, all, it all has to do with those kind of things. But generally speaking, you know, California, New York, Florida, you're going to have your best options for commerce, transport, shipping, um, flights, and things like that. But it also comes with a hefty cost of living. Yeah. So you can trade that for a bigger home, uh, you know, much lesser cost of living at the cost of probably not so good weather and, you know, more expensive flights out of town. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, but you'd be central for both coasts then if you want to, you know, because if you're over on the East Coast and there's something happening on the West Coast, it's a bit of a track. But if you're in the middle, you can get to both coasts, you know, you can get to L.A. Yeah, and you tr- can get yeah. the trucking industry and, and those kind of businesses typically do well there. Yeah, um, there's actually I found out a ton of like rice farms and other sorts of, of industries in, in central Arkansas or in central um Actually, a slight, I guess, history lesson. Uh, I found out that a lot of um, Japanese people were stationed, were held there from World War II. Oh, okay. And um, they taught the locals how to, you know, grow rice and a few other things that's actually become quite popular there. Yeah, they probably wanted them away from the coasts, didn't they? <laughs> Just in case things got a bit too hard to handle. Uh, if they put all the prisoners of war 
uh, way inland, it's going to be easier to contain them if, if there's a Japanese assault. Or something. Wow, wow, that's a nice history lesson. And so they brought some of their culture with them and it stayed and it's become a thriving industry. That's really interesting. Pretty much. Yeah. And uh, just before we keep going, I just want to say thanks for having me, by the way. Oh, um, it's a pleasure. I like, I like wherever possible when I've done a book, if the authors are up for it, some of them are a bit shy. Some authors are, are the kind of people who like, the, you know, to sit in a, in a quiet room on their own and just create. And anything like this freaks them out. And there are a couple who I, uh, there's a couple I'm chasing now that, uh, that are not convinced <laughs> they want to do it. And I'm going, oh, come on, it'll be fun, you know. And for me, it's a real thrill because I always, I always treat it as a tremendous honor when someone like yourself, like an author, uh, entrusts their work to me, someone they've never met in another country on the internet. This is the first time we've spoken, and and uh, yeah. I always I always feel it's a real privilege. So I always, after the event, like to get to know them. I try not to get to know them during when we're doing the book, because I don't. I just want to concentrate on the book, and I don't want to have any preconceived ideas about the author or their motivation. And so I'll just do the book so that the words on the book are what I'm actually reacting to. I don't know whether that comes across, and then I meet them at the end and and just just find out. Uh, uh, how it all came together so let's talk about the book the book is called high performance marijuana what was the inspiration i i've been a lifelong athlete played sports in high school you know middle school before that um i became a cyclist well after college years and i've been terrified of marijuana for the up until a few years ago um not so much now, for when the, you the say what when you say terrified, terrified the effect it will have on your performance or terrified that a regulatory body will dope test you and you'll get a, you'll get blacklisted or something. What, what, what's, the, so, what's the fear? More so the criminality of it, you know, not okay. wanting to get in trouble. OK, um, yeah. Well, yeah, that's a big <laughs> one. I don't know. I don't know. Why I did. Right. So you've you've stayed away from it. Mm -hmm. Right. I see. And so, so, you know, growing up in South Florida, for example, you know, I wouldn't condone any minors or, you know, anyone underage attempt to, to do anything that they shouldn't be doing. But, you know, growing up, you have friends and, and older people that, you know, that, you know, may partake in it. And I was always like, well, I want a future in sports, you know, and if that doesn't work, I want a career, you know, yeah. and the last thing I want is to have a, a record of, you know, being caught with something like marijuana. Whereas if I get caught drinking, it, you know, they'll call my parents. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. They'll yeah. say no. They'll let me sleep yeah. it off, hopefully, and send me home. And it, it's really a non-offense almost, right? Even though you're a minor or, you know, uh, shouldn't be drinking, you know, you shouldn't be drinking under the legal age anyway. But the, the point is, you know, uh, you won't get in trouble really right yeah and not wanting to basically lose a future in sports or otherwise because of a record of being associated with marijuana and so the u.s jails I, are full um, of people who a lot of the three strikes and they're out people it was um it was marijuana convictions wasn't it that put them away for a long stretch yep and most of the time not really you know, I mean, of course, if you've got a, a history of other things, you know, yeah. that's a whole different conversation. But well, you could be speaking, a product of environment. You know what I mean? Um, you might sure. not have had uh, a strong role model in your life and you may have been led astray. And, you know, your environment may have led you to that. And, and then but you've also got this this drug thing. And then all of a sudden you're a you're a career criminal when really. If you'd have been caught early enough with the other stuff and and maybe had the right role models and the right help maybe that might not have happened yeah exactly and now even with the the laws being you know lessened or, or not so bad you know if you committed the crime before the laws changed you're, you're still not being released or anything and the truth is you know the hard truth is what's going to happen if they had to release hundreds of thousands of people <laughs> overnight <laughs> yeah All right yeah. It's a real thing and a real issue, but at the you know, like you've mentioned, you know, that's that's a good word is you've possibly turned innocent people into career criminals. Yeah. And now, you know, they've spent a, a decades, years living a whole different lifestyle. They're institutionalized and, if they've not really known any other way. Yeah. 
They haven't all had. They haven't had the opportunity to make the mistakes we make in life that build who we are, because they've been exactly. isolated from the real world. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's tragic in so many yeah. ways. The and, and, was just marijuana. Sorry? <laughs> you what? I said for the nail in the coffin was just marijuana. Yeah, and you describe it, or you ask the, you pose the question. Uh, with the book that is cannabis a hidden gem for athletes can you explain how it could be a hidden gem for athletes i don't want to say performance enhancing because it's it it's not really about isn't. that how is it um, a hidden gem for athletes the the biggest the biggest thing you know when you it's and i don't want to give the book away but you know anyone that you know partakes in active physical activities or does sports the truth is you need to recover Right. And a lot of athletes look at um, Naomi Osaka recently, who who gets berated at these tennis events. Right. She has to deal with a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of for anyone who's not who's not familiar with her story. Yeah. What, what, what's the story with her? Um, she's essentially a, a, t a tennis, you know, young tennis star coming up and she's a, a, a talent. Right. Um, coming up behind the likes of Serena Williams and the sisters and, and all the other, you know, really good female tennis athletes. And but she seems to suffer from anxiety. Right. Um, perform. You know, you're not only performing the sport at that level. Right. You're performing to an audience. You have to be an ent entertainer. You have to deal with, you know, interviews and, you know, stuff like what we're doing now, except with the whole world watching. Right. Yeah. And it's not easy and it's hard to to be prepared for that sometimes. Right. And it seems, unfortunately, at times it, it's gotten to her. Right. Yeah. And, you know, stuff like marijuana could help with that. Right. It right. could now also you're not, help. You're not people. suggesting she gets interviewed stoned here. You're suggesting. <laughs> no. no. You, I, uh, you, I mean, I know I've read the book, but I'm trying to couch this for anyone who who hasn't read the, or listened to the audiobook just yet and that they're, they're, they're wondering where you're going with it you're basically saying that in in the downtime when she's recovering from stressful situations either from a match or some of the other stuff she'll have to deal with as a successful uh, athlete that it can help with that in the downtime to help with the relaxation and get ahead together yeah both from a physical perspective and or a mental perspective depending on you know of course you know taking everything safely and, and doing research and, and everything properly. And of course, you know, it mentions that in the book as well. It's not just a, a book to just go out and, you know, get as much as you can and, and give it a shot or anything like that. It's just, it, it, I wanted to highlight on the ways that something natural, how it's been ostracized and, and made illegal, but so many opioids and in drugs that are legal that are literally killing people and in making things worse are, are available and okay yeah. painkillers something... for, for, for injury and stuff yeah a lot of them people can get hooked on yeah the oxy this and that and yeah mm -hmm. opiates yeah so it's a lot safer than going that way to deal with yeah, to is. deal with a sporting injury pain yeah people self-medicating is becoming more and more popular and, and, you know, m my goal wasn't necessarily to to play devil's advocate and, and convince people to go try this thing or anything like that. It's just right now we live in an age of too much information, right? If you want to research anything on the Internet, it's just there's just too much out there. It's it's information overload. And really, you know, the, the what's hurt everything is the fact that proper studies have not been allowed. Right. And that's a big issue. Because e even with my book, I'm trying to highlight factual points. I'm trying to highlight, you know, dates and names and things that someone yeah. can actually. Go it's pretty on thorough the research you've done. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you know, the, that's the goal. The goal is to to educate people enough to further their own education on the topic. It's it's not necessarily a, a push to to try or do anything. It, it's not even suggested in the book that you run out and do it, right? It's it's educate yourself, understand what it is, and chances are this natural remedy for for lack of better terms could most likely help much better than what you're paying for stuff over the counter. Yeah. And and I think now, I think some people people have a, a problem with the difference between people who abuse marijuana and people who use marijuana. And I, I can, there, there's a comedian, I forget who it was, and they said, I don't know, they had to fill in some form or something. It was a joke, but they said they had to fill in some form 
And it said, do you abuse drugs? And they said, why would I abuse my friends? Yeah. And, uh, but uh, but I, think, I think the point, the, the satirical point they were making there is, is there is drug abuse. And then, I mean, you know, there are over-the-counter medicines that you don't need a prescription that if you take too many of them or in the wrong way, that they're dangerous and very, very extremely unhealthy. And so well, it seemed that the book was trying to make the point that if you use this particular drug in the right way it can be it can be extremely beneficial yep with much less downsides you know it's like how many commercials have we seen on tv that's like you know take our drug except you may suffer extreme and violent death and your head may pop off you know <laughs> and your offspring may grow three tails and but consult your doctor and don't stop taking it if you experience any of these symptoms right it's like a it's an ongoing joke on you know everywhere like why would i want to take this if with all these side effects yet somehow it's legal yeah and yeah. as you mentioned, you know, people who do abuse marijuana up to date, which, of course, you know, I, I would advocate for more proper study long term in, in legal study. But up to date, you can't technically hurt yourself by taking too much marijuana on its own, whereas right. alcohol and, and all the other opioids that are legal will downright kill you if you take too much. Yeah, yeah. So and it, in it's on. In the Sorry, book, you, you talk about there being two main ingredients in marijuana, which is the THC and the CBD. Uh, they've got very hard-to-pronounce chemical names, but I managed to get through them in the audio book, don't worry, but I'd rather refer to them as THC and CBD. Um, can you tell us what they are, what they do, and how they differ? Uh, generally speaking, CBD, you know, for... A more simpler explanation, it's what helps with the physical ailments, such as, you know, muscle pain and recovering. Um, it's actually legal almost in most. It, it's legal, to my knowledge, um, without all, everything in front of me. It, it's pretty much legal. You can buy it over the counter almost everywhere. Um, I've seen it in, in sport States, drinks here in the UK. Yeah. In the United States, we have a ton of CBD shops now, and I think they're... They're almost they, they're being created and in place strategically. So as if or I should say when marijuana marijuana is completely legalized, they'll already have a store, a customer base and everything else. Um, but back to, to, to accurately answer your question, you know, it's more it's going to help more with certain physical things. It's going to help, you know, calm you down, help you recover muscle fatigue and things like that. Where but THC, there's no mind altering effect with CBD in the right doses. Yes. Right. Why yeah. THC is typically what you know your 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 general person looking to get high is looking for. Um, that that's what typically affects you know the psychosis. You know it, it gives you that effect, that high feeling that people generally want. However, you know, and again, I try not to give the book away, but generally speaking, you know, from an athlete's perspective, that's not what you're looking for. No. Right? You're not looking to to essentially be drunk on something else right you you want to be able to perform you, you need your mind to be clear um but you, to perform you know the the greatest thing to to being good at anything not just athletics is consistency and the best way to be consistent is to be healthy and that goes for essentially same thing all walks of life right we we can't do what we do and you can't do what you do if you're not healthy and even more so for athletes who take a huge toll on their bodies you need to be able to recover. You know, for example, cyclists is, is, is a good example. Cyclists are a good example in the sense that you look at something like the Tour de France. You know, these guys are riding up to 100 miles for 21 days in one month. You know, it's just insane on, on the toll and effect that it takes on your body. Yet you're allowed to take, you know, drugs and, and painkillers that are actually hurting you versus taking something that was a bit more natural would actually help you without all the side effects you know that that are known to be out there uh so it's 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 ironic you know it's it's almost funny it's it's almost a common sense question wouldn't you want to take something that's not going to have any lingering effects that's not going to hurt and and, and is going to do what it's supposed to do of course like everything else you know moderation you know under proper guidance and you don't want to abuse anything but generally speaking you know we want to be healthy we want to come out of our sports or, or our careers able to, you know, retire or move on to our next phase in our lives healthy. Mm. You know, we don't want to walk 
away with lingering effects and and having to take you know prescriptions and things like that you know my dad my father was an army veteran and i watched him take 30 to 60 pills a day you know so growing up i was anti anything you know i generally i've been blessed i've been healthy but i don't take anything you know i i so I've suffered a broken hand and played with it and I didn't take any, I took painkillers once and it, it made it, it, I didn't know how, like how it made me feel. So I just dealt with the pain. Whereas people are out there doing the same, you know, someone who isn't necessarily mentioned in the book is Percy Harvin. He was an American football player who's retired now. And, you know, after he retired, he said he was high before and after every game, he suffered from concussions, right? And his career was cut short over injuries yet he chose to self-medicate rather than take all the opioids and things he was being given by the NFL. And, you know, he was very vocal about it. And when now you say he was seeing, high, he was high on THC on marijuana. On marijuana. Yes. Right. And he essentially needed that to play, right. To, to suffer from that, you know, and CTE, for example, is a huge issue, not in all contact sports, but even people who aren't necessarily athletes who have too many brain injuries may suffer from it. And, you know, CBD has been proven to help with that. Yet right. it's being advocated. It's not being prescribed. We're being prescribed just general uh, over-the-counter painkillers. So there must be s some side effects to THC and CBD, are there? Uh, to... Of course, everyone's different, and I, I won't pretend to be a doctor or, you know, to, to, to give some sort of, you know, official statement on it. But to our knowledge uh, from studies that we've had so far, um, generally, not really, no. So why is there such a stigma about it? Well, if you look at history uh, and you look at modern Western medicine, I think it's all about money, personally. You know, and, yeah. and it's just my opinion that this wasn't in the book because this is an opinion, not yeah. something that could... Search, but, but big pharma does bung the government in the u.s a lot of money and here too but yeah it's right. famous for but the if, u.s is famous for everyone it. found out that you know the pill they were taking over the counter essentially was just thc and cbd why would you buy a 20 dollars pill if you can just grow it in your backyard yeah yeah was there a do you think there was a race component to the use of marijuana with the various presidents' war on drugs and things? Do you think that played into it? I think it was used to further uh, a stigma. Um, I don't think it, in, it, in, in effect, it in itself had nothing to do with anything. But, of course, it would use it, it, would use it as a weapon in the media. Right, right. And so it got, it got, a, it got a bad name through that. Well, as, with it being illegal at the time and it still is illegal in most states isn't it uh, i haven't kept up on what's what but i think in washington state it's illegal and Colorado, california, california yeah yeah but still not all of the 50 states and certainly not in the uk either i think uh portugal in europe is the only place where um it's 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 legal or, or i don't know if it's legal or decriminalized i don't even know the level of it okay yeah so, i'm not sure for for yeah. parts of europe for sure but there are last i checked and and i probably have to look it up to give you an exact number but over 27 states do allow it for medical use oh it's well over half then okay oh for medical use right i see so that's prescribed by a physician and and medically monitored the dosage and, and the rest of it, right. Nevada is also um, fully legal recreationally now as well. Wow, okay. And that's probably down to money as well because the states can tax it. you got to follow the money. Well, it's smart. <laughs> I mean, people <laughs> yeah. want it. Yeah. You, as long as it's being produced and cured properly, you're not going to have lawsuits like you do at Big Pharma. And I bet it's well regulated in the states where it is legals which makes i would have thought which makes it better for for people who want to use it recreationally to have it regulated rather than buying it off some bloke on a street corner who's probably armed yeah well even that i mean that's a whole another aspect but even think about you know if it's regulated and it has a a, a label on it right a name behind it it's much safer than you don't know what you're getting on the street what if it's laced yeah. with something, if it's something else? 
Yeah. Okay, well, can we talk about... I mean, the book, this book was a fascinating read because it was talking about athletes and how this thing could be a, a hidden gem. And I, I have to be honest with you, I'm not a, a user of it. And so I had all those preconceived ideas about it, and I learned a lot by narrating the book. And the more I got into it, the more I'm like, well, why isn't more study done on this? And yeah, if people are on these heavy, heavy opioids to deal with, if, if for instance, one part of the, the, the book that you talk about, about the pain from injury, and so they're recovering from injury, why are they saying that's okay, but not something that's more natural like this? Can we talk about dope testing for athletes? Will they be disqualified if they test uh, if they test for it? Well, you go into that quite thoroughly in the book, and there there are different levels, and there are obviously there are different sports with different governing bodies. But just to give somebody watching this that just an idea of, of how it's regulated with with sports governing bodies. Um, well, essentially, different governing bodies have different levels of which that they deem acceptable. Um, but if you do go over that limit, and depending on the governing body, yes, you will be suspended. Um, you may be fined. So it's one, of, again, it's one of those things that, you know, you look at all sports bodies and, and they say the right things, right? They talk about safety and want to protect our players. And you would think as much money as these players bring in, yes, they make a lot of money themselves, but the teams generally, you know, they make way more, you know, it goes downhill, right? The the teams and the owners are going to make a lot more than the athletes and the governing bodies. So you would assume that they would want in place the, the safest and, and purest ways to, to help athletes, to get them to maintain, you know, their their level of skill, right? As an athlete gets older, you need more time to recover. As you get injured, you need to recover. But generally speaking, for money and presentation, these 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 agencies and, and businesses, they want these athletes on the field or on their bikes or on the court. So it's, it's changing. It's changing very fast. Um, but to a degree, it's, it's changing. Unfortunately, it's more so changing from the bottom up, meaning athletes are screaming for it, right? People like us are screaming for it. But the, the governing bodies, unfortunately, suffer from, you know, a case of this is how it's always been. Right. So they haven't had to change anything yet. And unfortunately, it should be the opposite. They should they should have been first to be looking for alternative ways to help athletes. Um, but we are seeing some changes. We are seeing at least levels are being raised by certain agencies to allow, you know, athletes essentially, you know, microdose where, you know, they can take smaller amounts to kind of to essentially get the, the positive effects without having to necessarily binge on it, which is not what you want anyway. You know, th this isn't about getting high, right? This isn't, a, you know, a, a, an advertisement to go out and get high because you're going to be a better athlete. It, technically, you know, just as it's presented in the book, as far as we know, it doesn't really increase performance, right? Tests were done to test VO2 max because initially marijuana was um, listed as a, a performance enhancing drug at some point. And tests were done to prove that incorrect. While yeah. the irony of it is that the most abused performance enhancing drug is caffeine. Right. Right, of course. Yeah, because that does affect, I mean, that affects heart rate and blood pressure and everything, but in a negative way. And, uh, yeah, so so yeah. athletes were using, well, so I'm guessing it's, there, were, there was no dope testing at all, I suppose, for high levels of caffeine, were there? None. So the, the way it typically helps um, without, I don't remember the scientific explanation, but I've read it a few times, is essentially it, it offsets the level at which you feel the pain. So you can push a little bit harder if you have a certain amount of caffeine in your system. Yes, it does negatively affect heart rate by making it higher, especially in, you know, high impact, you know, or high intensity sports. Um, and of course, as you don't want that, you don't want your heart rate being higher than it needs to be, at, especially at a high level of exertion. But generally, it does offset the feeling of pain, which is the simplest way to put it. So generally speaking, the athletes will take it, you know, towards the end of the event or at some point, you know, especially if they have a team doctor that's helped them figure out, you know, how much they need and how it affects their particular bodies. Um, it'll help them offset that a little bit so they can just get that little extra percentage to push a little harder. 
But essentially, without you know going too deeper into that or making this about caffeine, caffeine is the most abused performance enhancing drug. Yet it's legal. Uh, well, it's no not only can. legal; it's totally unregulated. I mean, alcohol is legal, but it's regulated. I mean, caffeine right. is is it's, 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 it's you know it's uh, there's no regulation on it at all, and it is pretty powerful and. You know, I I know that because I have a very low tolerance to it, and I have to I have to drink I have to make sure I I drink decaf wherever available, and and I can only really have it in tea, which I think is weaker, and I only have a couple of cups of tea a day. The rest, if I have a coffee, and I like coffee, is is I have to have decaf because it does mess with me, something shocking. Um, well, so is it time for them to just? I mean, the book is about uh, is it a hidden gem for athletes? Uh, what is the the book's got a subtitle? What's the actual subtitle? It's called High Performance Marijuana, and there's a there's a quite a long subtitle. What's that? Do you, can you Honestly, remember? that was more. Marketing. <laughs> that, that was, was more such. It was more about marketing. Uh, the subtitle. Oh, was it? Okay, was, and clickbait and stuff. Yeah. To, to get the the right keywords in place, to so people could actually give the book a chance. I see. Right? Okay, keywords. Yes, very important with books, audio books, anything online. I get you. I get you. The reason why I just said hidden gem. Uh, for athletes was that's part of what what's in there and that's the bit that <laughs> from reading it it struck me and i didn't want to uh, over complicate it so do you think it's maybe time then everybody had a, a, a grown-up sensible look at the drug the current drug laws and well, the first what it can mean for, for for people who who could use this in a positive way without cheating well, Correct. The The first thing is we need, like you mentioned, and like I had, right? For me, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't so much about negative effects on my body. It was more so I wasn't even going to get that close because I didn't want to get in trouble, right? Yeah. But once you've gotten past that point, you essentially, hello? Oh. Hello, can you hear me? I'm okay. Did I, did I freeze yes. or something? Yeah, I, <laughs> you, you, you're kind of like on a long blink for a bit. Just want to make sure you're hearing me. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Um, essentially, you know, we need to first, these, let's be honest, there's a moral stigma behind it, right? If, yeah. you, if you use marijuana, you're, you're, you're a bad person somehow, right? Yeah. Where that's not true. We have a lot of very, you know, well, smart, you know, wealthy people that use it for, for one reason or another whether it's for just, you know, the, the recreational aspect or for some other reason, you know, and you look at all the, and again, I, I don't want to give the book away, but you look at all the, the health benefits it has for people suffering from different conditions, you know, cancer patients, glaucoma, you know, there's, C, like I said, CTE, which is huge. Um, yeah. It helps out these, these things. And a lot of people know this, right? The, the people yeah. that- A lot suffer of MS sufferers use it actually as well. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people that actually suffer from something that it helps, they already know of it and they've probably been using it whether it was legal or not because it's just a smarter choice based on what's available based on current research and and what we know um personally i would love to advocate more so to get it tested properly right that's the first thing if it's illegal everywhere you can't really even get scientific about it um and that would hopefully you know start to deter a lot of the misinformation out there, you know, that's a popular word these days, right? Misinformation, right? And, but ultimately education is the key, right? Yeah. We need to be better educated on the topic. And at that point, yes, I would think it would be a no brainer for, for these governing bodies and for athletes to look at it more so as something more so to help sustain and support their craft, right? We buy nice computers to, to, to type better. We buy bigger screens to see more. We buy nice phones to, to talk to people, but yet athletes aren't being given the same opportunity to find the best, you know, the best supplements and support to help them in their craft. Yeah. And why is, that? you know, it's because of the regulations and, and all the misinformation and in news and, and stereotypes that have been created around the substance for so many years, when even back to, you know, 500 BC, people were using it for health benefits, right? So yeah. how can something that's been used well for health reasons for so long in the year 2022 still not be at least studied properly, mm -hmm. right? Because that's the first step. We need to study it properly, you know, have accurate and trusted peer-reviewed reports and tests 
so that we can make better decisions. And, and I think that's what that's where I would start. Right. It wouldn't be so much a trial and error. You know, we have enough, hopefully enough modern technology that we can we should be able to complete these tests relatively quick in the next five to 10 years. And hopefully athletes won't have to suffer as much as they do now or take something that's highly addictive. Right. Yeah. Even even even, you know, stuff like sleeping pills. Right. Athletes that travel different time travel different time zones typically get addicted to sleeping pills. And when you mix that with alcohol, it gives them this highly addictive feeling that isn't really being talked about. And why why is this happening? It's because of how much they're traveling, where perhaps something like what the book is about <laughs> could help them <laughs> fix these problems with without being addicted to it, right? Without causing them other health issues just to be able to perform. And mm. it, it just doesn't make sense to me that we could be healthier and safer yet we're being given again deadly alternatives instead of studying something that's been around is around can easily be grown can easily be you know manufactured and, and bottled and moved and and put to places but like i said i personally my opinion and again it's just an opinion is how can you sell something and make a ton of money on it if somebody can grow it in their backyard and do the same thing yeah yeah, there's got to and be a reason, and it's usually the money. Usually, usually, have to follow the money, whatever the, what whatever's going on. So when you were, I mean, the book is so detailed, but but detailed in a fascinating way. I don't want anyone to think, oh, it's just boring facts and figures and whatever. You 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 talked just then about you know people back in the days BC that they were using it. When you did your research on this, and you you mentioned specific athletes' cases in the book, you mentioned uh, the historical. Um, uh, use of it, in, you know. I think we, we're talking about ancient China and and, and places mm -hmm. like this. And then, you know, the regulation with different sporting codes and everything. How long did it take you to put all this together? Because it's just so detailed, but in an entertaining and interesting way. That was to, the you, That's a hard part. <laughs> where can I want to leave out so that it didn't become a boring term? Which it's not. It is quite. How, how long did that take to to put that all together? A few months. I started the project, well, more than a few months, but I started the project last year, um, last year, July. So it's actually, no, I apologize. 2020 July. I'm still in 21 mentally. <laughs> um, okay. July 2020. And, you know, the, again, the, the hard part is, the hard part was not making the book opinionated, right? Okay. If, that was deliberate, if was it? You wanted to to be just Put the information out there and let people make their own mind up. I wanted to I wanted to contrast the history of it and, and what's been available, what's hidden from from people. You don't learn these kinds of things in school. Right. Um, what's out there, but not necessarily on front pages. Right. And I also wanted to highlight well, what effects does it have? You know, what can it be good for? You know, even, you know, athletes, you know, myself, I started looking to it more so as a, a form of recovery and, and things like that. And but when you look at all the other effects, right, the, the gastro, the gastro, the gut effects, right, essentially, you know, it, it's called our second brain, right? And and if your gut's not healthy, you, you can't be a good athlete, right? You can't be healthy in any other walk of life. Yeah, I just use athletes and as an example. It's easy to use athletes as a good example because they have to put their bodies through, you know, a ton of strain, right? And athletes don't get enough credit for the mental strain that they have to deal with, right? When you have to perform on command, right? That's the most annoying thing in the world, personally, right? As I got good at certain things and someone's like, hey, come over and, and do this. I'm like, no. <laughs> right. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Right? I'm not, I'm not, um, you're not paying me to show up and, and, you know, exert myself for free. Right. And, but our athletes who do get paid to do it, it it's, it's like, Oh, that's your job. Right. When an athlete sometimes makes a political statement, you know, what's the first response, shut up and play your sport. Right. That's not your job. Right. So typically, you know, as people, we want to be understood and we want to be given the opportunity just like everyone else to to do what's best for us and, and things like that but again the whole point of of trying to the hard part of the book was trying to gather factual information 
and present it in a way that wasn't going to bore you to death, but also make you go, oh, aha. Because I, I had a ton of those moments doing research. Not right? that. And a, a big one for me was CTE, which is so new. Right. It, it, athletes are Junior Seau, who I watched a lot growing up. He was a, a middle linebacker who played, I think, for the Char San Diego Chargers for quite a and, few and years. And just for, and for anyone who doesn't know, CTE, it's it's the concussion from from um, from head impact. What's it stand it's a, for? It's a brain degenerative disorder, and essentially it, it, it's linked to, you know, depression and, and a lot of other very negative, you know, impacts to the brain. Um, I think there's a skateboarder. I, I can't remember his name for the life of me right now. But the, there's a skateboarder and Junior Seau who both took their lives, and wow. when they were when they were tested, you know, post mortem, they both had a lot of CTE. You know, they, they suffered from CTE, I should say. And both, you know, skateboarding is in football, but if you fall a lot, you can have a lot of brain, you know, brain in, impacts of your head hitting the ground. And yeah. for me, that was a big thing that, you know, I suffered concussions. My, I have a 17-year-old son who plays soccer who recently suffered from a concussion. From heading the ball? That is a... No, he jumped. He jumped. It was more of a freak accident. Uh, he jumped and got hit in the head um, by another player. It wasn't the ball. Um, okay. But still, after the yeah. game, he didn't remember. Um, we took him to get tested, and, and he suffered a concussion. He was out a few months. Right. Right. And we uh, we for ourselves and our children, we don't want repeated, you know, impacts to the head to cause such a, a degenerative brain disorder that leads people to take their own lives at, at some point. Yeah. Right. And if CBD, which doesn't get you high, um, it's not, you know, this evil thing that you put in your body and turns you into some degenerate. Right. Could somewhat help that. Wouldn't we want to protect ourselves and, and our children from these kinds of injuries and, and potential issues later on? Yeah. So, you know, there's a ton of good information in the book that, you know, like I said, when I was researching it, I was like, whoa, <laughs> I didn't know that. Right. I wish I would have known it sooner. You know, yeah. maybe I would have had a different stance or maybe I would have been a different person right now. I don't know. Um, not to say it's some sort of miracle drug or anything like that, but definitely you know, anything you could do to support and sustain yourself. You know, I want to play with my grandchildren, right? I don't want to be too beat up or too old to to do those kinds of things. And if something, if I can find something that I can research thoroughly and I hopefully gets more, te gets tested more, can help me do that, why wouldn't I do it? Yeah, and so, a lot more, like you it, say, testing, testing and research, because without the testing and research, you end up with stuff that's frankly just made up or exactly or there isn't actually hard evidence on it and they take a few cases and then go whoo look at that because i think there's been a there's been a lot of people say that uh, people who abuse marijuana are more susceptible to mental illness like schizophrenia but but all the same because of that that that's just uh, it's not fully it's not fully researched well, is it yeah <laughs> what's that right it hasn't been tested or proven it hasn't no right yeah so again, but you people, know, but people we... fervently believe that people who are not medical people obviously but people do believe that and this is because there isn't all the other research because of this this stigma about this drug yeah okay so you did all the research it took ages you've written a cracking book you get it out there as an ebook. You decide you're going to turn it into an audio book. How did you find the process of turning your work into an audio book? Um, I'll, I have no shame in saying this. I hope you use this as an advertisement. I reached out to a few people, <laughs> and I hired a, a different author. And it was a it was a terrible experience. This book should have been available at least six months ago. And you hired you know, a different you, what author to write it. Sorry, narrator, narrator. Oh, Sorry. I see. You you did actually hire a narrator, and it didn't work out. They they ghosted me. You know, they they just modern day ghosted me. They the initial fifteen minute review, I think, is the process. Yeah. Um, there were quite a few errors in it. Sure. And, you well, know, you, you was, get that, but as long as they're willing to fix them. I was like, hey, this is my first book. I see this, this, and this. You know, I'm okay to move forward, but I just want to 
just want you to confirm that these things will be fixed. And they're like, yeah, yeah, for sure. This was just a, you know, it, it wasn't too, it wasn't the most professional response, but I was like, okay, you know, my first time, sure. Let, let's, okay. let's give you a chance. Right. Yeah. And eventually they just disappeared. Um, wow. So your process, uh, you know, and again, I'm, I'm proud to say this, your process was very clear. You know, the, the best thing in the world, you know, when you're you're working with someone for a service is to to meet someone that not only says what they do, but they do what they say. And, you know, your process was very clear, very concise. You know, you you you, you take you go above and beyond to protect both yourself and the person you're working with. So, you know, I was telling my wife, I'm like, look at this, look at this. He's you know, this person's communicating, you know, <laughs> and. <laughs> And what they want, look, they're they're telling me what they're going to do. And it's available when they said it was going to be available, if not before. Um, so I was, you know, over the moon with, you know, the first few steps, you know, ultimately to, to leading into completing the book. And, uh, you know, circling back to your earlier point, you know, when you first offered me to to be here, I was like, at first I was like, whoa. I haven't, I haven't done that before. <laughs> right. But then I was like, well, it's a no brainer. Right. Because this gives me an opportunity to not only speak about the book, but also meet the person that I worked with. Like you said, we, we never met or even spoke except no, for a few messages. No. And, and I, you know, I don't know whether everybody's, everybody's different, but I like it that way because everything's in writing and uh, you can say, you know, can you change this line here or can you change this word? And I can go, yeah, I've changed it. Please check it out. Make sure you're happy with it before we move on and all the rest of it. So we've got everything nice and clear. There's no room for misinterpretation. And plus, you know, I'm a bit of a chatterbox too. If we were talking over the <laughs> phone or over whatever, we could get off on something and then you can go, hey, that thing in the first chapter you said you'd fix it. And I'd go, oh yeah, I forgot. But because it's all written down, I can go back and I can go, okay, tick that off, got that. He's happy with that. Okay, let's move on and get the next piece. And we just we just work through it. And uh, And I always break them down. I always break them down into, I do the first hour. Well, I do, we do the 15 minutes. Then we do the first hour. Check that you're happy with that. When you're happy with that, move on and then do it in two-hour chunks. I always do my books that way. Rather than doing a whole book and then the the author listening to it and going, oh, this isn't right, and, this, and then I'm repeating the same mistake because I didn't know it was a problem. And Yeah, I just like to work that way. And you were very, very easy to work with, very, very clear instructions on, on what you wanted. And I, I thought I got the vibe of the book quite early on. Getting the vibe of the book is, is the main thing with a book if you can work out kind of where it's coming from and what's what it's about and it helps if it's an interesting book uh, which <laughs> it was you know what i mean if i'm learning along the way and i understand what you're trying to get across or i think i do and then i gotta i've got to get that across that's that's my job to make sure this communicates and that whoever get, downloads the audio book gets the information the way that you intended it to be because i'm guessing when you wrote it you wrote it to be read not to be read out loud and listened to. So I have to be aware right. of that and, you know, make sure I can, you know, translate that. And, and I really enjoyed the book. It was, you know, it, 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 you know to, to be totally honest, it's not a book I would have picked up to read because I'm not an athlete and I don't use marijuana. So it's, it's, it's a book I wouldn't have got to. But then when I read it and I'm getting further into it, I'm going like, well, why is this? This 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 doesn't make sense. And when you get, into, you know, when you get into the opioid thing and all the rest of it, and I was like, I was really fascinated by it. And when you go through the history of it, and uh, and it did seem to me that there is a, this huge stigma and this is this prejudice, and it's and and it's like sport is missing a trick that could that could help people, which is it's. You but know, yet, more research needs to be done. Yeah, but we're constantly finding athletes are using you know, harmful performance enhancing, not this obviously isn't a performance enhancing drug, but the, the point is, you know, there are so many other things that are available to our athletes yet. One of the safest as we, uh, as far as we know, isn't. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So All right. It's well, it was just terrific. And if you're watching this uh, on YouTube, if you go into the uh, the blurb, I mean, there's my website, but, you know, the blurb with YouTube, there is a link there where you can connect up to Audible. And if you sign up for a free 30 day trial, you'll get you can download the book for free. 
Uh, and there's there's no catch on that. You just all you have to do is, is sign up to, to the 30 day trial with Audible, and it's, the trial is free. And you can download the book if it's the first first book that you that you get from there. It is free. That's how that works. So that link is in the in the blurb if you're watching on YouTube. So hey, PJ Frederick, it's been great talking to you. Great to finally meet you. And uh, I think this is an important yeah. book. And thanks for letting me be part of it and help get the help you get the message across. Um, it was it was fascinating. What's next for you? Is there going to be a sequel? Is a follow up in the works? Um, perhaps pretty comprehensive. The first one, actually. So <laughs> I don't know if there's much left to say. There. But but what is next? Is it other books? Or are there other things that you that you want to write about? There are there are a few other topics um, that I, I have interest in that I think perhaps could I can get some information out there. That again, my my goal was to create something that. Of course, the name and the blurb under the name, I don't even remember all the words. That's more marketing in an attempt to to get people to give it a chance, of course. Um, yeah. But, you know, there are things out there that I think a lot of people can truly learn from. You know, a, another hot topic in today's day and age is cryptocurrency. OK, yeah, yeah. Um, that's yeah. Been interested in. So that's another potential idea. Um once I can gather, uh, like similar to this topic, you know, I, I want to have a clear and concise message, you know, backed by facts and, and not make it opinionated. Right. Because, of course, I can write a very opinionated, you know, piece of literature, but it, it doesn't necessarily help somebody truly understand what we know, what we don't know, or at least, you know, start a start start a chain of events that would get them to at least go research it themselves, right? That's the goal. The goal is to, to get people to think for themselves a little bit, go out there, see what's in the book, and then go, aha, like I did, and then go, oh, like I did, <laughs> right? And then go go confirm it for yourself, right? I, I, I want people to fact check it. I want people to to give it a shot and then go learn for themselves. And, it, it, and again, it's not an advertisement or a suggestion to try it. It, it's a at least understand what it may or may not do right everyone's different you know as we all know with everything else you know but if you at least understood it better and education is key right and we've spoken you know we've kind of touched on it and gone through different things but a lot of the topics and, and things we face today are is due to a lack of education so that's the goal is to to get something out there that you're not going to learn in school Right. If if we unfortunately, if we go over all the things we didn't learn in school, we wouldn't have enough time. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, that, that's the goal is, is to help people like myself who, you know, either you stayed away from it for the wrong reasons. You know, and there are good reasons to maybe stay away from it. As you mentioned in your case. Right. You know, that caffeine it, it affects you different. In my case, I could drink a bucket of it and it, I go to sleep in, in an hour later, right? It doesn't really bother me. It, I don't know why, but it doesn't. But at least we know that, right? Because we were given the opportunity to to see it, to, to buy it from somewhere safely, right? A, any coffee shop obviously isn't going to be contaminating your coffee. Yeah, and, they're not going to cut get... the caffeine with something else. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I'm putting baking soda in the caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, or in the, in the beans anyway, and and that way, you know, we get to figure out what works for us. And, and the goal is to just be a healthy and live long and successful lives, right? And and if we can find something that helps us do that, why not? Hey, well, thank you very much for writing the book. And thank you very much for choosing me as the narrator for the audiobook version of the book. Like I said, links, if you want to get the book, are in the, the... If you're an athlete, you should at least read this. It will open your eyes to so many things. And uh, it will make you ask more questions. The book makes you ask questions and asking questions in life is good it's been great to talk to you uh, i hope you continue to enjoy your break and you get back home soon and uh hey thanks again it's been great getting to know you cheers thanks for thanks for working with me and uh look forward to working with you again sometime <laughs>